So welcome to this little presentation on histamine. The idea is to give you some idea about histamine intolerance and some ways to combat it. I always think the best way to do that is to sort of fully understand the whole topic. Just quickly, uh, I do have a science degree and also I'm a specialist practitioner in diabetes and obesity, uh, qualified phlebotomist, level four personal trainer. So I have a fair few qualifications, but I'm only giving you this for information and educational purposes. I'm not a doctor. Um, a lot of this is based on blood tests. I've seen thousands of blood tests. But anyway, we're going to talk about histamine, explain it as simply as possible and go through um, just a few areas of where we might be able to improve our histamine tolerance. So histamine originates from one of two ways. It can either be an allergy induced process that happens entirely within the body or you are ingesting histamine. So there's the two pathways of um, histamine entering your system. Uh, so let's quickly talk about allergy induced processes in the body. Um, how does that happen? Well, a pathogen could enter your body, any organism that can produce a disease. And on those pathogens, you will have antigens. And uh, this is a molecule or a molecular structure that may be present on the outside of the pathogen. And it's the presence of these pathogens that will trigger the body's autoimmune response. Most people, I think, have heard of histamine. So let's just look at histamine. There are a few other things that are released when there is an immune response. The mast cells, which is a type of white blood cell, will release histamine. Okay, and then we need to just look at the word histamine, a bit like vitamin. Uh, An amine is a signaling molecule. So uh, vitamin, for instance, comes from vital amine. That's just a contraction of those two words. And when we're talking about um, amino acids being acted on by an enzyme, they become a biogenic amine. And that's what a histamine is. It's a biogenic amine. Well, what does that actually mean? Okay. Well, what that means is it reaches a receptor, it does a job, and then the body has an, another enzyme called uh, diamine oxidase or diamine oxidase, depending where you live on your pronunciation. Uh, but most people shorten that to DAO. And this is important later. But just remember that your body produces histamine, it goes to a receptor site, it does something, and then when it's finished its job, it's cleaned up by another enzyme. So histamine is a chemical messenger. That's its molecular structure, and it goes into the body and it does some things, okay? So a little bit of a geek alert. If you're interested in the chemistry, an amine is, uh, tends to be something that contains a uh, nitrogen atom. So uh, that's your geek alert there for those that want to take a screenshot. Anyway, let's go on. So histamine is now in your system, and this is the inside of an uh, arterial wall, and you have these cells all along here, and they are very tightly bound together. And what, ha what happens is histamine attaches to these cells, and it actually shrinks them, which creates some space in between the cells, and then plasma... Um, people think of water, but, you know, we're talking blood plasma, a lot of water as well, obviously, uh, can leak from here and into the interstitial space. And this causes swelling. So it's a really, it's a really simple mechanism. If you ever look at um, uh, an area in your body, like your elbow or your knee, and it starts to swell up. This is the process that's making this happen. And you will call this, posh name is edema, but basically it's that sort of spongy swelling fluid um, feeling in your joints. Some people claim that it makes their joints immobile. You will see some heat, some redness, and you might experience some pain. So that's a histamine reaction from the immune system and the inflammatory response just quickly explained. So the other way that you can get histamine is consumed with food. Okay, so let's talk about that. When a plant or an animal stops being alive, basically, when it dies, the bacteria feed on their proteins. And the byproduct of this is histamines. So we could be eating foods that contain a lot of histamines, and that will create an immune response in some people. Uh, and they'll have these um, particular things we've got on the list here, which is a brilliant list from uh, paleoplan.com. And you can see you've got nasal congestion, watery eyes, runny nose, um, sinus infections, head headaches, migraines, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue, hives, skin irritation, 
itching, eczema, digestive issues, abdominal cramping, uh, problems with your period, swelling in tissues, anxiety, high blood pressure, flushing. There's, there's, there's so many things. Why are there so many things from this little molecule called histamine? Well, histamine can attach to four different receptors and it can uh, attach itself to many different areas and the mast cells will um, basically produce the histamine. It will go to stomach cells, brain cells, nerve cells. So histamine is very active all over the body. And that one molecule that works on four different receptors will then go on to target eight different organs. So you can get respiratory tract infections or problems. So you get asthma, which again is an inflammatory response of that, um, that particular area of your body. The effects on the skin we talked about, you know, you get itchy um, and also histamine can trigger adrenaline release. So you feel anxious as well. So it's not a nice situation to be in. So DAO is the key enzyme responsible for the degradation of extracellular histamine or free histamine, regardless of whether that histamine originates from the body or it's consumed with food. So this nice graphic, this scale here, you have incoming histamine, whether that's from um, food or whether that's incoming from your own body and going into the system, incoming into the uh, into the system you will have this DAO production, which matches the histamine. So what happens, histamine is released, goes into the system, goes to its target receptor, does its job, and then DAO does a cleanup job, basically, and reduces histamine. So you don't want histamine floating around after it's done its job. Uh, and that's, that's the thing. So what happens if you're short of DAO? Well, the DAO defense system gets overwhelmed. So this is one of the things that's not really looked at when we talk about histamine intolerance. We talk about things like uh, pathogens, things that antagonize you and, and cause that response. And we often talk about the foods that you're eating could be high or low in histamine. But many people miss this third option of looking at DAO. Why is it being overwhelmed? Why is the production of it not enough? Is it just simply that you are eating too many foods containing too much histamine? So that, that balance, going back to that balance scale, is it that side of the equation or is it the DAO side of the equation? So we could look at how DAO is produced. It is a digestive enzyme produced in the kidneys, thymus and in the intestinal lining of your digestive tract. So if there is a shortage, you can see that DAO is sometimes used as a nutritional supplement. And it's frequently used to treat symptoms of histamine intolerance. And that makes total sense because if you're having problems with a pathogen that you can't control, whether it's from the environment or from your food and you're not sure, quite sure what's causing this histamine problem, then you could look at the other side. Well, let's do a clear up job afterwards. Let's get rid of it by supplementing the DAO. So let's have a look at maybe some of the foods that could be causing you a problem because maybe you've not thought about this. So histamine intake that we can control. Well, there are foods that intentionally up the histamine levels. That's not to say that when you're aging meat, that is the goal, but it is also a, a byproduct of the goal of aging meat to make it more tasty. Um, aged cheese is another example where the aged cheese does taste uh, fuller and richer. So that's really the goal. But what also happens is the histamine level goes up. This is the same with some red wines as well and kimchi. There's a few things, but they're the main ones in this sort of way of eating. So some tips here. Cured meats, they can have high histamine levels. And even eggs, if you're eating an excessive amount of eggs, um, they can be an issue for some people. Whereas things like white fish is low in histamine. Sadly, I, I have one allergy, and that's to cod. So that white fish is probably out for me but you could also look at turkey uh, as an option so there's a couple of examples of high histamine foods and there's a couple of examples of low histamine foods and here's an example of foods that contain the actual dao enzyme so that's grass-fed kidney and uh, liverwurst so there are many different ways of looking at histo histamine intolerance and sometimes we can unintentionally raise the amount of histamine in the body by having food sitting around for a long time. That, that's an example where you buy some fresh meat, put it in the fridge and don't eat it within a couple of days. You're increasing the histamine level of that food. You could ex 
expose food to bacteria. So maybe at a picnic or you're out eating and you, know, you haven't washed your hands properly. Um, that could possibly do it. Like I say, being left in the fridge too long. Histamine can multiply even at refrigeration temperatures, but obviously not at frozen temperatures. So that's why some people go for frozen meat. And you can have undigested food in the colon, which is exposed to gut bacteria, which will not be meat. Um, there are many, many studies and, and nurses that do ostomy bag um, emptying. And anyone that's had an ostomy bag will always tell you that there's never meat in that. An ostomy bag is a bag that is attached to you before um, your food has left your small intestine, goes into the colon. The ascending colon, there can be an ostomy bag right at the beginning there. So that's that's before it's even got into the colon, pretty much. And you can see that there are grains, seeds, beans, nuts, legumes, and casein proteins in these bags, never finding meat in there. And you can have these ostomy bags all the way around the transit of the colon, um, but you will never find meat in there. In fact, if your stomach acid is sufficient, you will find that most meat is dissolved within the stomach within about one hour. So another geek alert, we're going to look at some studies. These are studies of people that have had interventional trials. That means that the application of DAO as a supplement has been used to see if their problems clear up. So let's have a look. Sorry, just uh, flicking a bit too soon there. So let's go to the first one, the digestive system. Uh, a two-week study in 14 people with histamine intolerance and symptoms that included abdominal pain, bloating or diarrhea. 93% of participants reported a resolution of at least one digestive symptom after just taking 4.2 uh, milligrams of or micrograms of DAO twice daily. And there's the there is the reference at the bottom there if you want to see that study. So that seems quite quite compelling. Migraine attacks, uh, a, a one month study in 100 people with previously diagnosed DAO deficiency observed that participants who supplemented daily with DAO experienced a 23% reduction in the duration of migraine attacks compared to the placebo group. Again, there's a reference that will be in the in the show notes, skin rashing, uh, a 30 day study in 20 people with uh, a chronic skin rash and DAO deficiency already noted. Um, a twice daily supplement, they had significant relief in symptoms and required much less antihistamine medication. So although those studies suggest that supplementing with DAO may eliminate or improve symptoms of deficiency, there's no guarantee that it's effective for everyone, but they're quite compelling and, and definitely look at those links if you're interested to see how those studies were designed and how they were set up. Um, I have no shares in DAO supplementation, by the way. So one of the things that comes up, uh, if people go keto or carnivore, uh, they initially feel a lot better. And then maybe after a couple of years, they might start feeling worse and feel like they have uh, a histamine issue. It's always good to then look at what you've added. And I find I'm, I'm two and a half years into this now at 57. I started at 55. I went uh, full carnivore. It's been great. I haven't experienced this yet, but I have got into being more experimental and this is what happens and people try more preserved meats more aged meats um looking at meats maybe that are less fresh or um cheese that is raw and aged so you could look at some of the things that you're changing and work out whether you have suddenly by accident increased your histamine um, intake and some people just uh, leave the meat in the fridge like i say rather than freezing it and and that can increase the histamines so what can we do to get the DAO production to be optimal? Understanding that the DAO enzyme is dependent on a few vitamins help. So vitamin B6, B12, which is great and plentiful if you're eating a good quality protein, iron, uh, copper and vitamin C. So it makes sense to be mindful of these cofactors and especially things like copper and vitamin C, which are crucial components of, of the DAO enzyme, and B6, which is a key cofactor. And that's the thing that enables DAO to degrade histamine. So like I say, eating this way is probably getting those things in plentiful supply. Um, you can get enough vitamin C from meat or liver. Um, contrary to popular belief, there is vitamin C in meat and liver. You can also have low DAO. Um, because of a few things. It could be possibly your GI tract has some damage. The lining is, is damaged. Antibiotics and chemotherapy can damage uh, that lining. 
It's very uncommon to have a genetically low level of DAO. That doesn't seem to be coming up as an issue. And you can have deficiency in those cofactors I just mentioned, such as vitamin B6, zinc, copper, and vitamin C. And uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can happen um, because you're competing, your body is competing with the bacteria itself. So um, that can be an issue. Yep. Medications. Medications can also inhibit DAO. 341 drugs commonly used in the intensive care unit were chosen for investigation and looked at the possible activation or inhibition of histamine degradation by the enzyme DAO. So basically of those, 44 inhibited the enzyme from both the species that were studied. So they were studying canines and humans. Uh, four inhibited the canine enzyme only and 13 the human DAO only. So there's a big amount of medications that can cause the DAO to not do its job, basically. So what can we take away from this? We can take away that there are three possible ways to control histamine intolerance. Uh, one of those is to reduce histamine levels in food. So avoiding those aged foods, eating low histamine foods, those those sort of things. And obviously looking at how often you leave them out on the counter before you cook them, leaving them in the fridge rather than freezing them. So basically that's number one, reduce histamine levels in food. Two, you can increase the production of DAO. So that's making sure you have plenty of the cofactors like B12, B6 and um, copper, vitamin C, all those things that we mentioned. And the last thing is you could look at DAO supplementation. Um, like I say, I don't have any shares in DAO supplements or any supplements really. So um, hopefully that has been helpful for you.